What's up, college football fans? Don't forget to check out and order your copy of Stiff Arming Football Myths, our latest football game plan book. So go on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books and get your copy. We have these available in paperback as well as in PDF form. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2014 preseason FCS Top 25. So let's start this video off by seeing who debuts on our list as the 25th ranked team in the country. The Bucks burst onto the scene last year, finishing 10-3. First, the good news is that mostly the entire offense returned, led by running back Christian Reyes. But the bad news is that, number one, they lost some key players defensively, and two, they have an even tougher schedule down the stretch. Despite losing Dre Joseph, Lee Doss, and Rashawn Allen offensively, the Southern Jaguars are still well-stocked with enough talent to make a run at the SWAC title. How soon they are able to overcome those losses offensively determines whether or not how quickly they enter the top 25. Southern Utah was on the cusp last year, and they get a good portion of their solid defense returning this season, and they'll get a huge test in Week 2 versus Southeastern Louisiana. The Dukes should be a tough opponent week in, week out in the CAA, and I think quarterback transfer Vad Lee from Georgia Tech will make a huge difference for that offense. There's a lot to like about Sacramento State. Everyone returns on an offense that was one of the best in the FCS. Now defensively is where you have the questions, and that's what's keeping them just missing the top 25. I love what the Bobcats have been able to do over the last six seasons, one of the premier programs in the FCS. And if they can replace Denaris McGee at quarterback, this team could definitely find themselves in the top 25 sooner rather than later. Health was the biggest reason for Richmond going 6-6 six and six last year. They're now healthy and possess two top prospects in wide receiver Stephen Barnett and defensive tackle Evan Kelly. And they're going to make things interesting this year in the CAA. Rarely do you say that a team that lost its head coach and record-breaking quarterback and wide receiver is still in good shape, but Eastern Illinois will once again be a tough team to beat. And keep an eye on running back Shepard Little, who rushed for over 1,500 yards last year, and wide receiver Adam Drake to once again put up great numbers this season. The Lumberjacks kick off our top 25 after finishing 9-3 last year. Northern Arizona has more than enough talent despite losing running back Zach Bowman to challenge for the Big Sky Conference this season. I really like what the Princeton Tigers bring to the table, especially on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Quarterback Quinn Epperly is a dual-threat dynamo that could find his way to Philly this year for the Walter Payton Award ceremony. Alcorn State's offensive line is the best in the conference, and defensively, they're a stout at every level, and I would keep an eye on defensive back Devin Francois this year as he's a very talented player, but can they replace running back Arnold Walker is the biggest question mark entering the season. Head coach Casey Keeler takes over his Sam Houston State squad that must replace three prolific players on offense and two excellent players defensively, but the Bearcats do give back defensive tackle Gary Lawrence and four starters along the offensive line return, which are great building blocks to start with. Bethune-Cookman, led by head coach Brian Jenkins, are looking to finally get over the playoff hump this year. Talent has never been the question for the Wildcats, and they have a chance to open up the season with an upset victory as they play FBS Florida International. Can they finish is the major question for the Liberty Flames. Head coach Turner Gill must replace key players in the secondary, but offensively they return practically everyone and should be once again a factor in the Big South Conference. Some may think that Sacred Heart at 19 is a surprise, but I don't think so. Running back Kashauta Spence has NFL potential as well as defensive end Troy Moore. 18 starters return from a team that went 10-3 last year, so definitely keep an eye on the Pioneers this year. The South Carolina State Bulldogs were arguably the best defensive team in the FCS last year, and the majority of that group returns intact. Now, offensively, the running game should be solid once again, but the passing game has to replace quarterback Richard Q. The Furman Paladins defensive line was very good last year. As a matter of fact, that entire defense was as well. But expect the young offense to be a lot better this season, and they must replace talented offensive lineman Dakota Dozier. New Hampshire has been a model of consistency over the last decade, so no reason why they shouldn't be in the top 25 and shouldn't make another deep run this year in the playoffs. William & Mary's defense will once again challenge for the best in the FCS. Defensive end Mike Riley is one of the best pass rushers in the country, but can they get it into gear offensively will be the question this season. Tennessee State loses some talent on offense, but this was a stacked team defensively, especially in the secondary with defensive back Daniel Fitzpatrick. Their offensive line should once again be stout enough to allow for the offense to have success, and the Tigers play Jacksonville State on October 11th, which could be for the OVC crown. 
Chattanooga got snubbed last year for the playoffs, and they won't have to worry about that this season as the nucleus of that team returns intact, led by NFL prospect defensive end Davis Toll, who led the team in sacks last year with nine. Despite losing 2,500-yard rusher Terrence West, four starters on the offensive line, the Towson Tigers are still in great shape. Last year's CAA Freshman of the Year, Darius Victor, is expected to pick up right where West left off in the backfield. The Jack Rabbits have one of the most well-balanced teams in the FCS. They can run the football and play solid defense. The continued growth of the passing game with quarterback Austin Sumner could make this the most dangerous Jack Rabbit team in a while. The Chanticleers have been the class of the Big South Conference for a long time, and while they must replace wide receiver Matt Hazel and running back Lorenzo Taliaferro, they have quarterback Alex Ross back in the fold along with the best linebacker in the country in Quinn Backus. We saw a rare losing season for the Montana Grizzlies last year, which in my opinion was an anomaly as this is a very talented football team with an exciting player at quarterback in Jordan Johnson and defensive end Zach Wagenman, who's a two-time All-Big Sky performer. Quarterback John Robertson is one of the most versatile players in the FCS. His dual threat ability gives Villanova a chance each week. The hope is that defensively they'll be able to get off the field enough to make a deep run in the playoffs this year. Jacksonville State's dynamic offensive attack gave team fits last year, and with the combination of running back Demarcus James and quarterback Eli Jenkins, who got better each and every game, there's no reason why the Gamecocks shouldn't be back in the playoffs once again in 2014. The McNeese State Cowboys will be very tough defensively, and although they lose quarterback Cody Stroud, I believe their ability to run the football will be more than enough to carry this offense as they break in a new quarterback. Northern Iowa was a very young team last year, and now they have the look of a squad that could challenge for the Missouri Valley Conference this season. Running back David Johnson also has big-time NFL potential. The Lions are one of the favorites in the FCS this year for the championship, led by quarterback Brian Bennett and their spectacular defense, which gets a boost from two-lane transfer Jordan Batiste in the secondary. The Lions face three early tests as they play Jacksonville, Southern Utah, as well as Tulane. There is a lot of optimism this year in the Bronx as the Fordham Rams are returning virtually every major contributor to last year's 12-2 squad. Quarterback Michael Niebrich and his three top receivers are returning, while the Patriot League's Defensive Player of the Year linebacker Stephen Hodge is back patrolling the second level as well. At number two, I have the reigning three-time national champion, North Dakota State Bison. Can they overcome the losses of their head coach and key contributors on both sides of the ball? That's big questions, but they've kept it in-house by hiring defensive coordinator Chris Kleiman as their head coach. And the one thing you quickly learn is that you never count out the depth and the talent of the Bison. At number one, I have the Eastern Washington Eagles. They are armed with one of the best quarterback receiver combinations in the country in Vernon Adams and Cooper Cup. The Eagles get great talent back on the defensive side of the ball and defensive back Tevin McDonald and linebacker Ronnie Hamlin, which makes this one of the most talented teams in the country. And also don't forget to check out every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, College Football Now on our Football Game Plan Radio Network located at blogtalkradio.com slash football game plan. And you can catch me out as co-host of the FCS Wedge Show presented by AnyGivenSaturday.com, the fine folks over there. You can find it 7 a.m. Mountain Time on one of many ESPN and CBS Sports Radio outlets.